Great so, music. you know, there's a big topic I want to talk about, which is, you know, the famous uh, musician 21 Savage. And then after that, I want to see what happened with that because it's been the news about getting a green card and the singer Drake saying he got his green card from the embassy. <laughs> <laughs> from his embassy in Yugoslavia or something like that. It was, it, was, it was certainly a surprise to us that he announced that in a song before we announced it. So, <laughs> so let's get the details of that. Then I just want to learn about how you got into immigration. I built your practice. You're obviously you're one of the most famous immigration attorneys, very successful. And there's a lot of information mentorship you provide to our listeners. So what happened with 21 Savage to start and to the extent you could talk about openly and publicly, what happened with the case eventually? Well, great. You know, back, this case started back. I, of course, I didn't know who 21 Savage was, right? I'm, I'm an old white guy. So I, I'm not, I don't listen to hip hop. I'm not, I'm not into the scene. Uh, it, but in 2019, uh, he had just released uh, his uh, Savage Mode 2 album, and he was up for a bunch of Emmys. Uh, he had a very famous song. Uh, and he went on, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, and one of his songs um, had some lyrics that he changed to condemn the Trump administration on uh, the kids at the border, getting separated from the kids at the border. He had mm -hmm. changed some lyrics. Uh, much to the surprise of the crowd. And, and, you know, I think it was Kim. It was one of the night shows that he was on. And um, the next uh, week was the Super Bowl in Atlanta. And the week after that was the Emmys. And the, I'm sorry, the Emmys, Grammys. And he, had, he was nominated for a whole bunch of Grammys as well. Uh, he was out at a club um, uh, and was leaving the club with, uh, with his, one, of his, one of his friends, I think it was Young Nudie. I don't know all the names, John. I'm sorry. I get a little confused. With some. <laughs> some of them are quite colorful, uh, but Young Nudie, I think. And um, he was uh, he was driving his his company. He has a company, right? Called called um, I forget what it's called. Savage something or other or Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Uh, and uh, his manager is it's his manager's. I think it was an SUV of some kind. He was driving on the way out. And they were leaving the club and all of a sudden they get surrounded by DeKalb County police officers. And as part of this gang task force in DeKalb County, which is one of the counties here in Metro Atlanta, uh, there's an ICE agent there. Uh, so he pulls over. He doesn't run. He pulls over. Uh, and uh, the uh, ICE officers, the, the, the DeKalb County police officer, detectives get out of the vehicle. They start searching the vehicle. And then, he's, and then he just he tells the ICE guy, here's your guy. So they clearly targeted our client. All right, he was clearly targeted. How long was that? What year this was this? 2019. This is February 2019. It's like the week before the Super Bowl in 2019. Okay. It was the week before the month, the night before. It might have been the night before. Uh, it was maybe it was a Friday night. And uh, they uh, they said we got gotcha. you. And they they he never went to the police department. He never went to the police department. Now, there was some allegations about what was happening at the time he got picked up that were then later led to other charges. Um, but, you know, he, uh, he, he knew he, he knew he was undocumented. Uh, but uh, ICE thought he had criminal convictions, which he did not have. Mm -hmm. He did not have any criminal convictions. Uh, and uh, he'd been arrested several times, but he had never had any criminal convictions. It's pretty common here in Georgia. And um, especially in DeKalb County, where he grew up in a really tough part of town. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but ICE took him right to the right to their office, 180 Spring Street, right where ICE is. Yeah. They never booked him at, at the, 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 the jail. He never talked to the detectives. And then within 24 hours, he was in he was down in in um, uh, Irwin County. Irwin County is the infamous county where they where the uh, um, gynecologist was doing operations on women and and uh, sterilizing them a couple oh, wow. years ago. You may have heard that. That's the same yeah. place. So Irwin is in southeast Georgia. It's literally four hours from here, um, middle of nowhere, hellhole little county jail that's, that was turned basically almost completely over to ICE. Now, of course, all the jailer, all the guys, people that work there, they're all African-American. So they all knew him. Yeah. Right? So they all knew him. Um, I get a phone call, and I, I had read about this on a Sunday paper or maybe Monday morning, and but I didn't know who, who he was. I got a phone call from his general counsel later that day uh, that said something to the effect, hey, are you are you Chuck Cook? Of course, she didn't say it right. Nobody ever says my name right. But she, you know, <laughs> she tried. Gina tried. Uh, his his general counsel is the premier entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles, Dina LaPolte. Dina is the one that just ended up um, 
uh, basically rewriting all of the entertainment laws out of Congress, all the, uh, 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 the royalties, all that stuff that Congress just passed last year. She's that woman. She's amazing. Really an amazing lawyer. Um, and I think she, I think Dina may be from the East Coast initially, because like me, she sounds like she's from New York. Mm -hmm. um, fast talker, really into it. Uh, F word is an adjective, adverb, verb, noun, and <laughs> every other type of, type of word you can imagine. And um, she, she asked me about the case, and I'd heard about it. But I, I said, what do you need? He said, well, can you represent him? I said, oh, I don't know. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, so we talked for a little bit. I realized he was clearly getting railroaded by ICE. And uh, so I said, sure, uh, let me make a couple of phone calls. So I called ICE and I know all those guys down there. And I said, here's what's going on. What's going on? Oh, no, we're going to deport him. Uh, he has an aggravated felony. Uh, we're going to do an expedited removal and deport him from the United States. Remember, Trump's president, right? Uh, and I said, you're wrong. He, he doesn't have a conviction. What do you mean he doesn't have a conviction? He doesn't have a conviction. Well, we have some records that say, is this your records are wrong? So I went, I, I, I sent one of my folks down to the Fulton County and I got the record. I got the, the sheet, no convictions. And I sent it to this guy and said, yeah, he's a visa overstay. He'd come in the country as an H4 uh, when he was seven years old. And it, I think he had traveled once when he was 11 and came back. So he, he, at the time, the time he got arrested, he'd been in the U S for 14 or 15 years. Uh, and uh, when you talk to him, he doesn't sound British, right? He just, and his family's West Indian. And they, so they all sound West Indian. They don't, you know, with a British accent, but he does, he just sounds American. Um, uh, grew up in DeKalb, rural, you know, in DeKalb County, where it's kind of a tough place to grow up. Um, so I said, look, he's not, he's a visa waiver overstay, release him. So he, he was an H4. He he visa waiver. He's a visa overstay, he's release him. But is he a visa? Was he a visa waiver person? No, or? he's a visa. He's just an H four. H four never came on S though. Okay, because I was. I'm like, yeah. how's what's going he's on? Who's S though? What's going on? Yeah. Stay. So release him. Yeah. They don't. They refuse. They literally refuse to because now they have egg on their face, right? They made a big deal about this. So I just said, okay, you can tell the press. And so of course it was big news. I started getting calls. I said, here's what's going on, and they they released a statement, and you can still find it today. It was completely false about him completely false um so i went I, I paid him a visit i went down to Irwin, uh <laughs> and he'd really never been in jail before and this is you know you've been nice maybe you've been not been nice detention centers but you know these are not jails like jails these are different these are worse than jails in my opinion uh and he was in one of the worst ones there was in Irwin county but the guards fortunately did treat him differently because they knew him, they they yeah. knew his music. They they loved his music, so you know they, they you know they, they didn't they didn't put for example they didn't put him in general population. Wow, oh, yeah. Um, which would have been tough because he doesn't speak Spanish. Most almost everybody there spoke Spanish. He doesn't speak <laughs> Spanish. Um, so I went and talked to him, and he was just like, you know, I, this is outrageous. I I, I just want to. I'll, I'll go back to England. I said, you know, his name's Shea. I said, Shea, you're not going back anywhere. We'll get we'll get, we'll get this figured out, and. Uh, so we uh, filed for a bond. The bond got assigned to Judge J. Dan Pelletier, who uh, is known in Atlanta for being, he's retired now, but one of the toughest judges. We, you know, we have terrible judges in Atlanta, right? They were, <laughs> you know, the denial rates are super high. And, like zero percent uh, asylum cases, asylum. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, if you have an asylum case in Atlanta, those, by the way, those judges that denied all those cases, all but one are gone. They're not, we have a whole new slew of judges denying asylum cases now. <laughs> uh, uh, and, um, so I talked to the government. They refused to give a bond. Uh, we So we just started doing a bond hearing, right? And he's testifying. He's doing a great job. Um, government, you know, I get done. I said, Judge, you know, release him on his own recognizance. Um, the government's like, no, Judge, we disagree that we want to cross-examine him. And I prepared him. You know, I said, look, they're going to ask you these questions. He was great. He was just great. And they they were pulling out Instagram photos of him at a shooting range. They were pulling out. Uh, Instagram stuff he'd said about gangs and stuff. He's like, look, I'm an artist. You know, it's yeah. none of that's real. Um, and the judge ended up giving him a bond, of course. And we got him out of jail the next day. Um, but then, of course, now he gets put on the non-detained calendar in Atlanta. Non-detained calendar in Atlanta at the time was three years. Did he next, have DACA? He, 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 what's that? Did he have DACA? No, he, he was eligible for DACA. 
But by this time, of course, Trump had ended new DACA. So I could have gotten him DACA. He didn't graduate from high school, but you know, you can get somebody in a GED class. Yeah. Him DACA. But he was DACA eligible. He just, he just never had applied. Because again, he's like a lot of those people who didn't apply because they didn't finish school. Yeah. They didn't understand that you didn't have to finish school. Yeah. So, you know, bad legal advice or no legal advice or friends telling him stuff. So he, uh, we ended up getting him out of custody. And uh, next master is like in 2021 mm-hmm. or 2020. Well, now COVID's on. That was pre-COVID, yeah. Then COVID's the- on, COVID's on. And, you know, now judges are leaving during COVID, get assigned to a different judge. And, you know, pretty soon it's it's 2022 and uh, we're set for a merit hearing on his case. And um, we're about a week before the hearing and uh, the government, um, all of a sudden, the pl- I get a call from the DeKalb County Police. Uh, we want to talk to your client. The cab is the people that were on there. Why are you talking to my client? You're his lawyer. I said, well, I'm his, I'm his immigration lawyer. I'm not his criminal lawyer. Here's his criminal lawyer's information. That's when they charged him with uh, two charges in DeKalb County, one for uh, possession of a narcotic and possession of a uh, firearm. Where'd these come from? Well, the, yeah. they, he'd never been arrested before, right, in DeKalb County. Well, when he was stopped that night, uh, the police searched the car. There was a gun in the car, but it was a registered handgun to the manager. It was his handgun in the glove box. Um, and the the drugs they were referring to um, had been found in a bush. <laughs> and uh, they were like inside of a Sprite bottle or something. But they had no way to connect it to Zaya, none. You know, they they did a DNA test. I said, look, there's, there's a chain of custody issue here. We got we got amazing criminal counsel, and they they it took them a long time. It took them like six months. Maybe it was 2021. I remember trying to kind of lose dates because it just it was all kind of a blur. At the COVID time, yeah. Uh, COVID was just threw it all off, and they it ended up the Cab County ended up dismissing the charges. They just couldn't prove it. There's no way they could prove these charges. Um, and so at that point, we were then we then filed a motion to terminate with the court. Uh, we're able to uh, terminate his case uh, with the court because uh, the government didn't respond to the motion to terminate. I'm sure you, I don't know if you do litigation stuff, but I you know, know half the time you file stuff, the OCC doesn't respond, right? And this was this is a priority case for these guys. I mean, they were fighting it tooth and nail. They just didn't respond to the motion to terminate. Terminated the proceedings. We then went through the process to adjust him. Wait, let's said, back up. You're jumping around. So they terminate proceedings just because I sit in. Op- opposed and the judges said, okay. they said no opposition terminated have a nice day then what was the basis for adjustment uh that's a great question that's beyond the scope of this conversation okay, but, okay. um but we were able to adjust his status uh in, in here and we got into uh, uscis was terrific mm-hmm. um obviously a, a lot of the officers at immigration here are african-americans as well given where we are and they were just terrific with him um uh, the, when we when we had the interview um, took them a couple months as, as they always do to adjudicate yeah. the case, got it approved. Um, and then we just, then we knew the tour was coming to, he was already touring with Drake at the time. And we, and everybody knew he wasn't going to Toronto. Yeah. He wasn't going to Toronto and now he can go to Toronto. Uh, yeah. so we were able to work with the Canadian council and, uh, and Drake's team and get him into Toronto for the concert. And now he's of course announced his European tour. Uh, going and, and oddly enough, he's British, of course. Um, and uh, but he's not starting his tour in Britain. He's actually starting it in Paris. Uh, <laughs> and so we'll have we'll have we have Paris Council working with us, make make sure he can get in without a problem and uh, tour over Europe. And then he ends up at the the O2 Arena, which is this massive arena in London. Uh, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be just an absolute blast. You know, I'm, wait- waiting, I'm waiting for Savage Mode Three to come out. And his ode to Chuck. I don't think it's <laughs> yeah, in there somewhere. Well, thanks for letting us know because whenever there's immigration in the media, 99.9% of the time, the information has some major incorrect part of it. Oh. Um, it's never, I mean, immigration is so complicated. Immigration lawyers have a time figuring it out, but like, let alone a, a reporter. So we had Drake saying, entertainment reporters, right? Yeah. Entertainment reporters have no idea. Um, because the first story's out, well, he's a citizen now. No, wait a second. He's not a citizen. <laughs> No. There's talk about ESTA. There's talk about DACA. There's talk about going to the embassy. There's 10 year bar issues. I'm like, none of this makes any sense. How is this possible? No, no, so, no, 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 I'm glad you set the record straight. 
when Drake's song came out, we were like, what? I'm calling his general counsel. What? What is he talking about? <laughs> you know, he went to the consulate and got, went, you know, we're Yugoslavians. I don't, I don't quite where know where Yugoslavians came from either, but it well, must rhyme is all I can tell you. 